Hello everybody and welcome to today's video of Project Pack 09. This is Julie Willand and I'm so excited to be here tangling along with you all. If this is the first video you're watching in the Project Pack 09 series, I do suggest um, you pause this video and you go back and you watch them in order. So starting with the introduction and prep videos and then um, going along in order from there. This project is a little different from some of the other project packs we, we've done where each day we kind of build on top of each other. So it is important that you do watch these videos in order. Um, so starting with the introduction and prep videos and then going from there. But if you've been following along with us all along, welcome. Um, I am working on a Zendala tile from my Project Pack 09 materials. If you're following along with materials that you have at home, that's great. And if you've been following along from the beginning, then you should already have your little pod here all tangled, as well as your organic tangle already filled in along your string. My organic tangle that I chose is Rick's version of Flux. But even my version of Rick's version of Flux is a little different and that's what I really do love about this tangle is that it is so versatile and um, everybody can kind of put their own little twist on it. So I have all my tiles prepped like this. And before we begin tangling, I'm just going to pay attention to this space right here. This space we are going to be leaving blank today, but right now we're just going to take a moment to really go back to that first step in the Zentangle method, which is gratitude. And um, Molly explained this when you guys did your first tile, but we had a CCT once describe this practice where before she tangled, she would lightly put down in pencil things she was grateful for. And so it kind of helped as a reminder through her entire practice um, to remember to be grateful for those things. And I just love that concept. And so we're going to do that today. And today I am thankful for my health, um, for the health of my family and my friends. And I'm just going to keep that in my heart um, as we tangle today. But we're primarily going to be working, actually entirely going to be working, in this section right here. And we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to be working with the Micron 05 um, Hunter Green color. I think it's a lot of fun to be working with these bigger nib pens. Um, they're bigger than the O ones we usually work with and it gives us the opportunity to work a little larger. And we're going to draw a big Marsu. It's not going to take up the entire space though because we're actually going to add a few of them. Um, so if you just kind of want to watch me first, but I'm going to start about right here. And I'm going to begin my spiral, kind of going behind my flux when I need to, leaving quite a bit of distance between my lines of my spiral. I'm going to go ahead and add one more. And then I'll go back and I'm going to start my second spiral here. And then about the same size, going behind that first one. And then in my remaining space, I'm going to add another one. And there we go. So we have three different marsus and so that marsu and this is my absolute favorite tangle uh, but it wasn't 
actually the plan I had for this tile. When I was first um, experimenting with what I wanted to do, I was excited about the prospect of working larger. And then I originally was thinking about the Tangle Printemps because Printemps and, and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that, so please forgive me, but it is French for the word, word spring. And so I was really thinking about incorporating that into my tile since this whole project pack kind of is about spring and growth and new growth and new beginnings and things like that. But once I put down my giant print tops on my tile, I was like, well, that's Marzu. Um, so we went with it and that's where we're going today. So I'm going to start with this first Marsu we're putting down. And we're going to kind of do traditional Marsu here. And I'm going to start at this middle point and I'm going to draw a band that's slightly curved that meets the opposite line. And then starting again from that middle point, I'm going to draw another band that's slightly curved that meets that same line just a little further down. And I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to start at this point again. This is going to be the last time that I start at this specific point. But again, I'm going to draw a slightly curved line, turn my tile, and then I'm going to move a little bit farther down this line right here. And I'm going to add another slightly curved line, turn my tile, Start a little bit further down this line, add my slightly curved line to the other side, move a little bit further down, my slightly curved line that goes to the other side. So as you can see here, um, the bottom of these little bands that I'm putting down are closer together than the top to kind of give it this effect. Um, that we're really going to play up when we shade later. But we're just going to continue this process going around our spirals. Kind of slightly curved. Creating these bands. They all don't have to be exactly the same size. And when you get to these spots that are kind of behind your flux, you can just kind of imagine where they would probably be. It doesn't have to be exact. Remembering to keep turning your tile. Now that we have all of our bands put in, I'm going to go back. Um, I'm still using my Hunter Green Micron. And we're going to fill in these bands that we put down. I like these O5s so we're filling in. It goes much quicker than the O1. But you still want to take your time. Alternating spaces. Marsu is one of my favorite tangles for many reasons. One, once you're done and you um, shade it, it's so much fun. I think shading is the best part. I can't wait till we get there. Um, but it also is like kind of a lesson for me because Marsu used to be my least favorite tangle. I remember the first time I even attempted it was when I became a CZT back in 2013 or 2014 maybe it was and it was the last day of seminar we were working on renaissance tiles because Mars was so much fun on the renaissance and I just I didn't get it um, and so it was, it was frustrating for me and so I never attempted it again 
for quite some time until I forgot what brought me back to it one day, but I just did it and it clicked. And ever since then, it's been my all-time favorite Tangle. If you follow me on the app, you know I tangle it often. It's a great mono tangle. Um, it's a great tangle to add layers to and um, to really explore shading and things like that. So if you're not too familiar with it, I definitely recommend Um, exploring it. We're going to do three different ones in this video today and then you can really take it lots of places. Remembering to turn your tile as you go. It's um, so important with working with this tangle because you want your hand to be comfortable. Remembering to breathe. Remembering that thing you're grateful for. Of all things you're grateful for. That's just a starting point. You know, they gratitude is such a great thing because you can really be grateful for big things and little things and it all matters. One of the other things I'm grateful for is that this morning my husband left me the last blueberry muffin to have. Small little things. And once you have all of your little bands filled in, I'm going to pick up this light green 05 that we're also working with. Um, or if you're using your own pens at home, you can switch to a different color or you can keep using the same color you're using. It's all up to you. But I'm just going to aura closely each side of these bands all the way around like I said I'm ordering very closely and there we go we have Marsu we're not going to shade it quite yet we're going to fill in all of our Marsu and then go back so I'm going to move on to my second one right here and I'm going to pick up um, the hunter green again and this time, we're going to fill a Marsu with a fragment. So I'm going to start um, in this band right here, my top band. And I'm just going to start in the middle somewhere. And I'm going to draw a line that goes from one side to the other. And then I'm going to draw another line that kind of creates a square space. It's not perfectly square because I am working on a round. And I'm going to aura closely the inside of these lines. And so now I'm going to keep adding these sets of parallel lines, these thin little bands, all the way around, creating squarish spaces roughly this size. So, very technical here, squarish spaces roughly this size, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. Again, they're not going to be perfectly straight, and that's all right. Especially when you get closer to the middle, they get less square. And that's why I had you start out here so you could kind of really get a feeling for what we were doing. And then once you get to the middle, like I said, they're not going to be square. You just got to kind of work with the space. 
you've got the we've got triangle spaces down here. And once you have all of your spaces, you can go ahead and pick up your light green pen or whatever second color you're using. And we're going to fill it with um, a fragment. And so again, I'm going to start um, up here where my spaces are more square. So you can really get an idea for um, the fragment because we will have to kind of improvise when we get closer to the center. So I'm going to start in this space right here. And I'm, if you want to watch me first, I'm going to draw a slightly curved diagonal line going from this corner to this corner, but it has a little bit of curve in it. And then on this side of the line, I'm going to aura it until I get to the corner. And then on this side, I'm going to draw a little crescent moon shape. And I'm going to fill that in. And then I'm going to aura that crescent moon shape, filling the rest of my space. And there we have our first fragment. So we're going to repeat this fragment, but we're not going to repeat it the same way each time. So in this space right next to it, my diagonal line is going to go from this corner to that one. And then I'm going to aura this side of it so it meets, these two same sides meet, if that makes sense. And then I'm going to add my crescent moon. And then I'm going to aura. And then my second space. So now I'm going to move on to here, and obviously I can't match up to this space, so I'm going to mirror it. And I'm going to add my auras. Add my crescent moon. Basically, I'm just mirroring this fragment back and forth as I work my way around my Marsu. And we're going to fill all of the fragments around, mirroring them back and forth. Don't worry if you accidentally do one in the wrong direction. I have done that many a times when working with this fragment. And then the end, once it's all shaded and everything's all working together, you don't really notice. So don't stress too much about it. And as we get to the middle, it's a little bit tougher because they're not really a square space, but you, you have the idea of what the fragment is. So you can just kind of manipulate it into that space. And in these like more triangle spaces, I like to use like the bottom of the triangle in the same way like I would one of the corners of my squares. And there you have it. You have your Marsu filled with um, a fragment here. 
And then finally, we're going to move on to our last marsu. And I'm going to be working again with the dark hunter green. And in these first two marsus, we kind of worked by splitting um, the bands up into sections. We're not going um, to do that with this one. We're going to do something a little different. And we're going to fill the spiral with the tangle in Zeppel. And what I mean by that, if you want to watch, I'm just going to start here. And I'm going to add a bunch of intersecting lines. Like you would in Crazy and Zeppel. So you want to create all these different shaped spaces. They're not equal. They're not the same. They're completely random. There's not a lot of rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. And just fill your spirals with it. And when you're done with that, you can pick up your light green pen or your second color. And we're going to go back and in each of these spaces that we've created, we're going to squish like an egg or a little Nerf ball into those spaces. So if you just wanna watch for a moment what I'm doing, I'm gonna start by redefining the line here. And when I get to the corner, I'm gonna round the corner Redefine the line, round the corner, redefine the line, and round the corner. So you can see I'm just really, I'm kind of shoving this little egg into this space. And we're going to do that in every single space here. So it's important that we redefine the line, round at the corner, redefine the line, round at the corner, redefine the line, round at the corner. If you're tempted to take a shortcut and just round each corner, you see that it doesn't really give you the same effect. So you really want to redefine those lines, round at the corner, redefine those lines, round at the corner. And again, this is all I'm doing to fill this entire marasu. I think another one of the reasons why I do love marasu so much is that it's a tangle that you can use as a string. And what I mean by that is you can detangle that you can then fill with a different tangle. And those are really my favorites. I love um, playing with tangles like that, incorporating them. Another great one is Huggins or Cadent. You can do it with Hobba. You can do it with pretty much any tangle if you really wanted to. You could manipulate it. Um, to use it as a string, but there are just some tangles that lend themselves more easily to this, and I think Marsu is one of them, and we can see that here, how we're filling it with, and Zeppel, you can also fill it with Crescent Moon, that's a great one, um, going all the way around. So there we have it, we have our three different Marsus done, so you can go ahead and cap your pens. Now I'm going to start shading, and this is my favorite part of Marasu because it really, really comes alive. And we're going to be working with our graphite pencil and our white charcoal pencil. And then you'll want your tortillons, one for white and one for um, graphite. We are really going to put down lots of shading on this tile. And we're kind of going to do it in layers. But we're really going to use this as we go along.
so don't be afraid and like I said we're gonna do it in layers so if because you, you can always add it you can't really always take it away and so we're going to start with shading around our flux and if you hear a little pitter patter in the background my apologies that is my dog he's been sleeping for most of this but I think he's just as excited about the shading as I am so he came to investigate. We're just going to go around our organic tangle so which is my flux here because you really want to give the illusion that your marasu is moving to the back. And so once you've added some graphite along your organic tangle We are going um, to work with our first Marsu. And the way we're going to shade this one um, is very simple. We're just going to add a lot of graphite. Well, not a whole lot quite yet, but a good amount. Around that center line, our center spiral. And then once you have your graphite around your center, you're going to take your tortillon and you're going to soften it. And I like to do it in a circular motion all around that center line. You don't want to pull it all the way to the middle. This, the highlight is important in Marsu. So make sure you leave that middle unshaded. And you can while we're here, we're going to soften around the flux that meets this marsu. And then once we have that graphite down, we're going to take our white charcoal and we're going to start in the middle here and we're going to add quite a bit of white charcoal down the middle. To really emphasize the highlight here. So I'm am being heavy handed with my white charcoal. Go back. And then you can take your tortillon that you're just using for your white and go back and soften it just a little bit. And you can see that white charcoal really gives it some dimension there. And that's what I love about Marsu and shading it. So now we're going to move on to this Marsu. I'm going to shade this one a little different at first. We're going to add just a little bit of graphite on each side of these thin little bands that we put down. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit. This is going to be our first layer of shading on this Marsu. So you really don't want it to be too, too much. 
And then once you have that down, you take your tortillon and soften it just a bit. You don't want to pull it out too much, but just to soften it just a bit. Once you have that done, I'm going to pick up our graphite again, and then we're going to add some graphite all along that original spiral, just like we did with the first Marasu. And again, go back with our tortillon, and we're going to spread it out, kind of going around that center line in a circular motion. And then again, I'm going to take my white charcoal and I'm going to go back and I'm going to add that highlight. And there we have our second Marasu done. But what I'm going to do here is where the edge where these two Marasus meet each other. I'm going to add a little bit of graphite right along the top of this first Marasu. Because I kind of want to send the second one with the fragments down a little bit behind it so it really appears like this first one's on top. So like I said, lots of different layers of graphite. But you can see there how it just gives the illusion that it's kind of sitting on top. And then finally we're going to shade our final Marasu. And we're not going to shade each individual little in Zeppel shape. We're just going to shade this like we did the first one by adding some graphite all along this center spiral. And then we'll use our tortillon to really go and soften it and pull it out into the middle a little bit. Again, you don't want to bring it all the way to the middle because we want that highlight. And I'm going to work on this graphite that we put down around our organic tangle. And then when we're done, we're going to go with our white charcoal and we're going to put that highlight down. Because this particular Marasu has more white space, I'm going to be a little heavy handed to make sure you really see that highlight. You really get that effect. And then, just like we did with these two, Marsus with these two me. I'm going to add a little bit of graphite here. Then go back and soften it and And now that our shading's done, I just have one last step I want to do. I'm going to go back with my Hunter Green. And on tiles where I've used a lot of graphite and a lot of different layers of shading, I always like to go back and redefine some of these lines. So I'm going to go back and redefine all of these flux lines or whatever your organic table, tangle, I'm sorry, whatever organic tangle you chose. I'm going to redefine the lines that meet up with my Marasu 
that might have gotten muddy a little bit with all that graphite that we put down. And this way it just kind of um, makes those lines bold again and really gives that illusion that they are on top and the Mars is down a little bit. And with that same idea, I'm going to go and I'm going to redefine the top line of this Marsu. And then again, the top line of this one to make it a little bit more bold against the Marsu that's underneath it. But there you have it, folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed my favorite tangle, which is Marasu, um, with me today and really exploring the different things you get to do with it and also the shading. Look at how much like depth and dimension that shading this tangle gives it. So it's really a lot of fun to work with. We're not going to shade a little pods or organic tangle because we're going to do that in a later video all together. Um, so again, thank you so much for tang tangling along, and we will see you tomorrow.